300 earthquakes in 24 hours just rattled a volcano linked to Oregon. If this was on land, evacuations would have already started. So, what's waking up beneath the Pacific, and how close are we to a new eruption? About 300 miles, approximately 500 kilometers off Oregon, an underwater giant called Axial Seamount rises from the seafloor. It sits nearly one mile, approximately 1,600 meters, deep on the Ring of Fire, Earth's most active belt for quakes and eruptions. It doesn't look like Mount St. Helens or Hood because it's hidden, but Axial is the most active volcano in the Pacific Northwest. Scientists have treated it like a living lab for years, and this week, the lab started buzzing. The last time Axial ramped up like this, something dramatic happened. More on that soon. In the span of a day, 300-plus small quakes fired off beneath Axial. Most are magnitude 1 to 2. Tiny on paper, huge in volcano language because they often track magma on the move. Sensors anchored to the bottom, cables, pressure gauges, and cameras send real-time data to shore. One veteran oceanographer put it bluntly, if this were on land with people nearby, we'd be evacuating. Why are small quakes a big deal here? Because the last swarm set off a chain reaction you could measure from space. Back in 2015, Axial went from tremor chatter to eruption. Quakes spiked to thousands per day, lava broke out along cracks, and the seafloor sank approximately 8 feet, approximately 2.5 meters, as magma drained from its chamber. That eruption poured out thick pillow lava, rounded lobes formed when molten rock hits cold seawater, stacking up to approximately 450 feet, approximately 140 meters in places. Today's activity is smaller, but the pattern, swarm plus inflation, looks familiar. So what are instruments seeing now? Think of the volcano like a balloon. As magma refills, the ground inflates. After 2015, Axial's surface rose fast, around 2 feet per year, then slowed to roughly 8 inches per year. But it never stopped. Beneath the seafloor, roughly 800 meters down, a magma chamber pressurizes. Quakes pop when rock cracks as new melt squeezes through. If pressure crosses a threshold, where would the lava actually come out? Axial doesn't only erupt from a central crater. It's notorious for dikes, magma forcing sideways through fractures, opening lateral fissures that can vent kilometers away from the summit. That makes forecasting tricky. You watch one spot and the break happens over there. So if it erupts underwater again, what does that mean for people on the coast? The good news, Axial is remote and deep. Shaking isn't felt on shore, and a typical axial eruption is lava-dominant, not the ash blanket style that disrupts flights. Tsunami risk from this type of event is generally low, unless there's a large landslide or unusually explosive interaction, rare for axial's history. But if the danger's low, why are scientists so dialed in right now? Because the network on axial is better than ever. Continuous cameras and pressure sensors mean we could capture, for the first time in this detail, how a submarine eruption starts, peaks, and wanes, from magma ascent to seafloor changes. Those insights feed models for other volcanoes, including the Cascade Range on land, where hazards overlap with cities. Speaking of the Cascades, how does axial story connect to giants like Rainier or Mount St. Helens? The Pacific Northwest sits where an oceanic plate dives beneath North America. Offshore, that process fuels volcanoes like Axial. Onshore, it builds the Cascades, Rainier, Hood, St. Helens, Adams, Baker, and more. Each system behaves differently. Rainier's major concern is lahars, fast volcanic mudflows that can race down valleys toward Tacoma and Olympia, even without an eruption. By decoding Axial's pressure quake eruption sequence offshore, scientists sharpen tools that help anticipate and mitigate risks on land. So, does 300 quakes in a day mean an eruption is guaranteed? Number swarms can stall. Axial has a history of bursts and plateaus, but if numbers accelerate, if inflation jumps, or if instruments pick up magma rising in dikes, the probability climbs. Fast. And this time, we'll see it in real time. We'll track Axial regularly and break down what the data actually means, minus the hype.
While most volcanoes lie dormant for centuries before erupting, Axial behaves more like a ticking clock, erupting roughly every decade, and right now, all the warning hands are moving toward midnight. To understand why scientists are so alarmed, we have to look back at Axial's most recent eruption, a violent event in 2015 that sent shockwaves through the scientific world. Axial's last major eruption struck in April 2015, and it was nothing short of extraordinary. Within a single day, scientists recorded more than 8,000 earthquakes. For comparison, that's more than California experiences in an average year. Deep below the waves, fissures tore open across the ocean floor. Lava poured out in fiery rivers, reshaping an area larger than the entire city of Manhattan. Yet not a single person on land saw the eruption as it happened. Only the instruments miles away registered the chaos. For volcanologists, it was a turning point. For the first time, they could capture an underwater eruption in stunning detail, measuring how the seafloor rose, cracked, and collapsed in response to the pressure below. But here's the chilling part. The signals leading up to that eruption look eerily similar to what scientists are recording right now. And the biggest warning sign of all? Something known as volcanic inflation, a swelling of the seafloor that suggests magma is rising once again. Right now, the most alarming signal isn't just the earthquakes, it's something called volcanic inflation. In simple terms, the entire volcano is swelling like a balloon, pushed upward by magma rising from below. Normally, axial surface creeps upward by just two to four inches a year. But since early 2024, the rate has skyrocketed. First six inches, then 10, and now, in some places, nearly a full foot of uplift. That's faster than scientists have ever recorded here. Picture the seafloor, two miles underwater, slowly rising as if the ocean itself is breathing. Each inch means thousands of tons of molten rock are being forced into the magma chamber below. And here's the chilling part. In 2015, this same inflation peaked just months before Axial erupted. The numbers today are not just similar, they're nearly identical. So, the question becomes, if inflation is repeating and the earthquakes are back, how close are we to the next eruption? The answer lies in the countdown scientists are watching right now. For the first time in history, scientists believe they can predict an underwater eruption with remarkable accuracy. Their models now suggest Axial Seamount could erupt by the end of 2025, and possibly at any moment before then. Back in June, Axial unleashed an astonishing burst of seismic activity more than 2,000 earthquakes in just 24 hours. The swarm later eased, but even now, the volcano still shakes hundreds of times per day. Each quake is magma forcing its way upward, splintering the crust as it rises. In 2015, these same tremors escalated into a full eruption. The eerie similarities between then and now have scientists on constant alert. One researcher even described the situation as a geological deja vu, a moment when history feels like it's repeating in real time. This time, though, the world is watching like never before. A vast network of seafloor instruments, pressure sensors, fiber optic cables, and even live underwater cameras now monitor Axial around the clock. If it erupts, every stage will be captured in unprecedented detail, from the first crack to the final collapse. But here's the unsettling truth. Knowing an eruption is coming doesn't make it less dangerous. The real question is, what happens when Axial finally blows? When Axial erupts, it won't look anything like the fiery explosions we imagine on land. Instead, the deep ocean will shudder as cracks tear open and lava floods out, instantly cooling into new formations of rock. Entire ridges could collapse, reshaping the seafloor in a matter of hours. Although the eruption itself is too deep to threaten coastal towns directly, the sheer scale of magma movement can trigger tsunamis, destabilize nearby fault lines, and even disrupt global communication cables that run across the Pacific. In a world connected by undersea networks, the ripple effects could stretch far beyond Oregon. But there's another side to this story. For volcanologists, Axial is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. By studying its eruption in real time, they could unlock secrets that finally allow us to predict eruptions on land. Every few years, its floor breathes, rising and falling as magma builds beneath. Each pulse is a warning, a heartbeat in the dark ocean that scientists can't afford to ignore. And lately, 
that heartbeat is speeding up. Axial surface never tells the full story, the signals do. Across the summit caldera, pressure sensors and seafloor beacons are recording a steady, relentless climb. The volcano's chest is rising, breathing in, but not exhaling like it used to. That's the first sign scientists watch for, inflation without relief. Then come the quakes. Not the kind you'd feel on land, but tiny fractures, hundreds to thousands per day, snapping through cold basalt like ice under strain. Each pop is energy leaving the rock and moving into the system. The last time Axial sounded like this, new lava crossed the seafloor within days. But the number that worries researchers most isn't the quake count, it's the pattern. Clusters are migrating along the rift zones, lining up with known weaknesses that have broken before. When that alignment locks in, eruptions here don't start slowly, they switch on. Hydrothermal vents add another layer to the story. Fluids exiting the crust are getting hotter, richer in volcanic gases, and more chemically reactive. Down in permanent night, white smokers and black smokers pulse like strobes, and tube worms sway in the chemical tide. To biologists, it's surreal. To volcanologists, it's a warning. Magma is influencing the plumbing higher than it did months ago. And overhead, a wire that changed everything keeps listening. The cabled observatory relays live data back to shore. Real-time depth changes, acoustic crackles, thermal pulses, turning Axial into the best-watched undersea volcano on Earth. When the floor jumps, alarms light up screens on land. So is this just another pressurize and relax cycle? Or are we watching a system that has run out of room to store pressure? Because if the next step follows the old script, the rock will fail along a rift, pressure will drop, and molten basalt will race through the breach, rewriting a map no one can see in a place no sunlight reaches. Most people will never hear Axial Seamount's name until the day it changes the map. When a volcano this size stirs, it doesn't just sculpt the seafloor, it reshapes the planet's systems. Each eruption pours out enough basalt to pave entire cities, yet every new layer traps heat, minerals, and energy that ripple through the ocean for decades. In the deep, that means chaos and creation colliding at once. Lava flows bury ancient vents, erasing ecosystems that took centuries to form, while new fissures burst open, releasing torrents of scalding water loaded with metals like copper, iron, and even gold. Within weeks, microbial colonies bloom again, proving that life can rebuild itself in the aftermath of fire. But Axial's influence doesn't end underwater. Every eruption triggers pressure changes that can subtly shift the entire Juan de Fuca ridge system, an active tectonic boundary that stretches from Northern California to Canada. Those shifts can cascade into small earthquakes along the Pacific Northwest coast. The same region scientists warn could someday face a massive Cascadia megathrust event. Then there's what Axial teaches us, it's the closest thing Earth has to a working laboratory for the unknown. The volcano's vents and magma chemistry mimic the conditions that may exist on icy moons like Europa or Enceladus. NASA's exobiologists study Axial to learn how life might survive in alien oceans. And now, with swelling magma chambers and restless rift zones, Axial isn't just a scientific marvel. It's a natural experiment running out of control. Every reading, every tremor, every pulse of heat is a clue in a mystery playing out beneath three miles of water. So what happens if the readings spike past the red line again? If the seafloor fractures wider than before? The last time that happened, the ocean itself began to glow. Predicting a volcanic eruption is hard enough on land. Doing it nearly a mile beneath the Pacific? That's something close to science fiction. But Axial Seamount changed the rules. For the first time in history, scientists have a real-time window into an active submarine volcano, a network of cables, sensors, and fiber optics stitched across the seafloor feeds, live data straight to labs on land, a continuous heartbeat from the deep. Every tremor, every pulse of heat, every inch of rising ground is recorded instantly. This system, known as the Regional Cabled Array, has turned Axial into the world's first wired volcano. It's so detailed that researchers can watch magma chambers inflate in real time and even see pressure waves ripple through the crust as magma moves. 
And here's where it gets eerie. The data doesn't just describe the volcano's behavior, it predicts it. In 2011 and 2015, scientists noticed the same pattern. Slow seafloor inflation, then a sudden acceleration, followed by an earthquake swarm. Both times, those signals ended with an eruption, right on cue. Now in 2025, the same warning signs are back. Sensors are showing the same rate of inflation, the same microquakes, the same rising gas ratios. It's like watching a movie you've seen before, but this time, you don't know how it ends. What makes Axial unique isn't just that it's active, it's consistent. Every cycle builds pressure, releases it, and starts again. The question is, will this next cycle behave like the others? Or has the system evolved into something new? For scientists, it's the ultimate countdown. For the rest of us, it's a rare chance to watch a planet breathe and maybe catch the exact moment it exhales fire. When Axial finally erupts, it won't look like the explosions we imagine on land. There's no towering plume, no rivers of orange fire, only darkness, pressure, and silence. Then, in an instant, the ocean floor breaks open. A shockwave of molten rock blasts through the crust, releasing columns of lava that rise hundreds of feet before being crushed flat by the weight of the sea. Water flashes into superheated steam, metal particles fuse mid-current, and the deep turns into a world of boiling shadows. Sensors will be the first to notice. Pressure will plummet. Acoustic monitors will roar with the sound of stone cracking. And somewhere on a monitor in Oregon, a small line of data will spike, proof that an eruption has begun 5,000 feet below. The lava doesn't stay still. It flows along rift zones like glowing rivers, hardening into new crust within minutes. Hydrothermal vents collapse and reappear in new places, spraying black clouds of sulfur and iron. Life on the seafloor dies in seconds, only to return again, stronger and stranger in the weeks that follow. And even though this eruption won't reach the surface, its fingerprints will. The shock can generate pressure waves that ripple through the ocean, detectable by instruments on distant shores. In rare cases, if enough seafloor collapses, it can even trigger small tsunamis. But the greatest consequence isn't destruction, it's discovery. Each eruption rewrites what scientists know about the planet's interior. It shows how Earth builds new crust, how life survives chaos, and how fragile our idea of stability really is. Because when Axial breathes, it doesn't just reshape the ocean floor, it reminds us how alive our planet still is, and how much of it we've yet to understand. In the end, Axial Seamount isn't just another volcano. It's a reminder that Earth never sleeps. It simply hides its restlessness where we can't see it. Every tremor, every pulse of heat, every fragment of new seafloor is a heartbeat from the planet's core, echoing upward through miles of darkness. Scientists watch it not just to predict an eruption, but to understand something bigger, how our world evolves, breathes, and rebuilds itself in cycles of destruction and renewal. And even in that crushing pressure, life always finds a way back, stranger, tougher, and more adaptive than before. So as Axial continues to swell, one question lingers. When it erupts again, what new secrets will it uncover? And what will it reveal about the world we thought we knew? If you've made it this far, you're part of the 1% who actually listens to Earth's quiet warnings. Do you think Axial's next eruption will happen this year? Or are we still just seeing the buildup? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I read every one of them. And if you love deep Earth mysteries like this, Hit subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss the next story when it surfaces. Because down in the dark, the planet is still writing. We're just learning to read it.